This 300-acre section of city-owned land in the South River Forest is one of Atlanta's largest remaining green spaces. It's also now at the center of the national debate over policing in this country. In March of 2021, city leaders proposed a new 85-acre, $90 million training center for police and firefighters. Almost immediately, opponents start calling it Cop City. Instant backlash. For some, Stop Cop City becomes this, this sort of rallying cry. Protesters argue that destroying parts of the forest would hurt the community. They also fear the facility will help further militarize the police. Why do you think it's in your neck of the woods? Environmental racism, racialized capitalism, and the fact that those people who live there cannot vote against it. The police training facility would be built in predominantly black and middle class DeKalb County. But since DeKalb residents aren't technically part of Atlanta, they don't have any representation on city council. The intersectionality of this movement cannot be denied. It affects us all. You have people who care about the environment. You have people who believe that Cop City would exacerbate all of the issues that are negative in community. All kinds of people, black, white, trans, indigenous people. Now, this is the training facility Atlanta police had been using until 2021. A former elementary school built in the 1950s, now condemned. Evidence of the building's past lives? Everywhere. Atlanta police chief Darren Shirebaum showed us around. And so we have to, as a profession, continue to evolve to be good at what we do and to be trusted by the community. And if we're not providing the proper training facilities and programming, uh, then we're going to fail in one or both of those areas. The project's official website claims the goal is to provide modern equipment and more socially just models of policing. The planned facility will include modern classrooms, a new shooting range, even a mock city. We're talking about fake apartment buildings, a nightclub, and gas stations as well. Settings where officers can practice de-escalation and other crisis intervention techniques. Not just law enforcement, but firefighters and emergency medical responders will also train here. What do you make of the public outcry so far, the, the criticisms? So the thing that really strikes home for me is, are we militarizing our police? So that is a national point of concern. And I can say this as a chief of police, I will never uh, lead a militarized police department. What I have to do is lead a group of men and women that are ready to counter any emergency that will arise in the streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Look across our nation in the last year. We've had active shooting events at Fourth of July parades. We have active shooting events inside of schools, at gay clubs, at shopping centers in houses of worship. We have to be ready for that. You would acknowledge that police need to be trained. They do. <laughs> and they have been, right? So with all of the training that they've been getting for decades upon decades, they are still disproportionately killing black people. They are still choosing when to use restraint and when not to. So I don't know that it's really an issue of the training. Perhaps it's more of an issue of culture. The training site provokes nearly two years of protests in Atlanta, drawing activists from all over the country and inflaming tensions between police and the community even more. On June 5th, more than 300 people pack City Hall for a meeting that lasts more than 16 hours. In the end, vote is 11 days, four days. The motion to adopt as amended carries. Atlanta City Council approves $31 million in taxpayer money for the training center. The funding for the $90 million facility will come from taxpayers and the Atlanta Police Foundation, a nonprofit that wants the training center built. APF receives millions in donations from some of America's biggest companies like Delta, Waffle House, and Home Depot. Construction is expected to begin in August. It does seem interesting, I think, to a lot of folks that in just the span of two or three years um, in this city and around the country, uh, we've gone from defund the police to, you know what, we should build a $90 million training facility for the police.
Does that strike you at all as, as, as a bit of a contradiction? So this is a nuanced national conversation. So it's not just about the, the talking points of defunding the police or the talking points of, you know, uh, a, a, a cop city. No, this is about how to make sure that we do safety right. De-escalation tactics, teaching people how to resolve conflict. So we're doing co-responder models versus just police going out there dealing with mental health cases. When we think about policing and we think about prevention of crime, we have to talk about the root causes of crime. And that goes back to unstable housing, insufficient food, lack of employment, lack of education, all of the things that affect people because of wealth inequality. And you can catch Craig's full special, Life, Death, and Cop City, The Fight Over the Future of Policing, on NBCNews.com. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.